Hello my friends and a very warm welcome back to my painting channel and in this video I'm going to be painting Dogmeat from the Fallout Wasteland Warfare Miniatures game. This is also a character from the Fallout video games and he is a very very good doggo so we're going to have some fun painting this little playable character up uh, and we're going to start by doing all of the base colours. Now if you've followed my channel and you've seen me paint other sorts of browns you'll know that this is one of my favourite colours to start with so we're going to start by using a Dark Rust 302 from Vallejo and this is a great great dark dark brown color that will give us a really good nice base tone to dog meat here and we're going to cover all of dog meat and I'm just going to be as sloppy as possible you know it doesn't have to be uh, perfect at this stage so we're just going to cover all of the base of the fur and then we're going to build all of the colors back up a little bit later now we're going to mix a couple of different colors together in this one and we're going to kind of step up uh, from doing what you kind of might automatically want to do with this model so most of the time i think you might want to sort of like dry brush this model but we're not going to do that we're going to change things up and we're going to make things just a little bit different so from there we're going to use earth and we're just going to use this just on the one the left hand side of the base here just to paint all of the dirt and the dirty grimy area just across here all of the mud we're just going to paint this with a nice earth color from there then we're also going to use a dark blue grey also from Vallejo so the three paints have all been from the same and we're going to paint all of the uh, the tarmac asphalt area so all of the stone area just across the other side using this dark dark grey colour this dark blue grey. This is a great colour because once we tone this down it is really easy to sort of turn into a, a, like a concrete or a sort of stone looking colour. It's very very quick and easy to, uh, to, to, to change so this is going to be a really nice uh, quick easy effect to make that base really pop. We're also then going to use a gold brown because there is a small piece of wood. You can use a mixture of different browns to paint the wood um, however you like. I'm using a gold brown for this one just to kind of uh, allow when I apply a wash in a little bit. Uh, I'm just going to allow that dark wash to sit into all of those little details and all those little patterns. And it's really going to make that piece of wood uh, stand out on that base as well from the dark uh, concrete to the light light uh, yellowy wood. I'm also going to use a bloody red just to paint these bottle caps here. So there's a bottle cap just on either side of the base, either side of dog meat. Uh, one on the left, one on the right, as you can see. And I'm just base coating these and we'll build those up again a little bit later. And um, we're also just going to add a small piece of bone light as well. Now with the bone light, I'm just going to add a small bit in between um, dog meat's mouth here. So just going to paint a little bit of the teeth. This is quite a difficult thing to get to. It's very, very small and fiddly. So don't worry too much if you make a mistake. You can always go back to that dark rust 302 and fix this back up. So it's not the end of the world. Don't worry too much. Uh, this is why we do this at the base stage area uh, rather than doing this a little bit later and making mistakes later on. From there, I'm going to use Strong Wash uh, from the Army Painter. This is a really, really great wash colour. So this is a dark, dark brown colour. Um, and this is going to tie all of those colours back together. So I'm going to apply this across the whole miniature, the whole base, everything together. The cool thing is, with this being a dark brown colour, it's going to tone down dog meat himself. So it will give us the opportunity to build him back up. Um, but it is also going to tie all of those colours in around the, um, the base in terms of doing the wood. And, of course, the concrete and things are going to make it look a little bit dark and dingy and muddy and dirty and things like that which is exactly the effect that we're looking for so as i say we're just going to cover the whole of the miniature with this including the base and tie all of those colors together now once all of that's dry, I'm going to move on and use a Necro Grey from Scale 75. Now if you don't have Necro Grey or you can't get Scale 75, that's fine. There are a lot of other alternatives that you can use. This is essentially just a sort of dark, dark bluey grey. So you could use like the dark blue grey that we used for the uh, the flooring for the concrete. The reason why I'm using this Necro Grey is because this is a rather, rather dark one. So this is a little bit darker again. Um, and it does have a little bit of a black sort of tinge to it. So if you wanted to, you could mix a little bit of black and blue together to get a similar sort of colour and a similar sort of effect. And pretty much I'm just going to paint all of Dogmeat's torso with this. So I'm going to paint just around between the top half and the bottom half of Dogmeat. And I'm also going to paint around his nose 
and a little bit around the face as well. So what we're going to end up with, um, and as you can see, what I'm trying to do is I'm just using a stippling effect using the very tip of the brush. And this is so that I can keep a little bit of that brown from underneath showing through as well. And this is going to create that element of the brown and um, the, the, the sort of dark gray, blackish kind of color showing through almost like fur. So this is giving us a little bit of a mixture of color, which is going to be a little bit more pleasing on the eye. Now the reason why I'm painting uh, the, 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 the dog in this sort of way is because this is going to give us that contrast then between sort of darker areas to much, much lighter, brighter areas. And it's going to really make this character stand out. So from there I'm going to mix the dark rust, which was the base colour that we used, along with the flat earth colour as well. And I'm going to use half and half, so this is just one blob of each. So as I said earlier, you might be tempted to use a dry brushing technique on this model, or on this miniature. But instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is just using the very tip of the brush, as you can see, just like I've just done with the darker black, more sort of blue-grey area. We're just going to use the tip of the brush, and we're just going to stipple some of these colours on. And instead of dry brushing it down, because by dry brushing, sometimes you can lose a little bit of control and go a little bit crazy with the dry brushing um, instead we're going to use the very tip of the brush and we're going to have a little bit more control and we're going to have a little bit more of an element of control where we place this um, this paint and we're going to have a little bit more control as to where we want these little stipples and these little flecks of color to be and this is going to show through because we're using this little stippling uh, a technique this is going to show through as these little bits of fur and these little colors and flecks of hair and, and, and tufts of fur showing through on the model as well. So that's what's going to really create this texture, it's going to really create that character and really give your eye something to look at on this miniature as well. So this is why we're using this technique instead of dry brushing. Now you can dry brush if you want, they're your miniatures as I say you can paint however you like but I just find this really really does uh, make the model pop on the table, it really does make dog meat stand out and it's very much worthy of such an iconic character as well. Now once you've done the Dark Rust 302 and the Flat Earth combination, I'm then just going to use the Flat Earth on its own. And again, as you can see, just by using that very, very small stippling effect, using the very tip of the brush, I'm just going to pick out some more of the fur and just going to pick out as much of the, um, the sort of highlighted areas as I possibly can. So just trying to be careful, thinking about where I want some of these furs and some of the hair and some of the lighter tones and textures to come through as well. Now the cool thing with this is painting this kind of um, character and painting this kind of dog, taking a look online at some of the pictures from the video game and things like that, is this breed of dog, um, this um, sort of Alsatian type dog, does have a mixture of different colours from dark, dark browns and blacks right the way through to a lighter sort of um, orangey flecks and light, light sort of creamy textures as well. So that's what we're doing as you can see, we're just picking out some of those furs and we just kind of build in that element of, of colour and texture going through by using such a simple technique. It does take time, granted, because we are stippling this and painting this by hand instead of just quickly dry brushing. But as I said earlier, it's well, well worth doing this because for such an iconic character, this really does bring the model out. This really does make this model stand out and it's very much worthy of the model as well. So once we've done that area, you could mix the two colours together and use the flat earth into a light earth if you wanted to, um, but I'm not doing that. Instead, I'm just going to go straight with a light earth, and I'm just going to straight away pick out some of the lighter areas. So as you can see now, that dark grey into the brown is already looking really, really nice. It allows the model to really, really stand out and really show off a lot of that character. And now just by using that light earth, what I'm going to do is just pick out some specific areas that I want the lighter colour to be. So I'm not going to paint over the whole thing, we're just going to paint down it in little bands, so a little bit around the mouth area and the jaw, just a little bit around the neck, something just across sort of like the legs and a little bit of the hind legs as well, just to bring some of that texture and that lightness and colour back through, just like so. And again, just using that very, very tip of the brush, just as you can see there. And that's bringing out a lot more character and making this, this, this little dog, making this character really, really pop in such a simple, simple way. Like I said, it takes a little bit of practice and a little bit of time to paint in this sort of way. But it really, really is worth that time because it does look fantastic when you get there. So as you can see, just picking out some of the lighter areas, the lighter fur, and all the work is done now just by using, as I say, the very tip of that brush, like always, 
and you can use not just the stipple in motion but you can also use a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a, a, a scrape in motion as well to kind of get some of those furs and some of the highlights to come through um, so you'll have to let me know in the comments below if you like this sort of technique if you think this is worthy of dog meat and if you think this really does make the character stand out and if it is um, something that, that looks really really cool and, and makes him stand out on the uh, on the tabletop you also have to let me know if this is something that is quite simple to follow through if this is something that you feel confident in doing um, and if not let me know why and see if I can uh, give you any advice or any tips uh, in the comments as well so from there I'm just going to use a little bit of dry brushing now just across the stonework. I think dry brushing is a perfect way to do stonework because it always looks rough and gnarly and sort of garish. This is kind of what we want out of the stonework. So I'm just going to use a blue grey pail um, just to dry brush this and bring that colour back up a little bit as you can see. So this is just bringing out a little bit of a highlight. The scrapes and things like that are just adding to that texture of the stonework and bits just like so and that's exactly what we want and again that's now going to look a lot lighter against our darker dog so again we've got that contrast you can see how that yellow piece of wood now is really standing out and that's exactly where we want it from there we're going to use the earth then just on the muddy side and again we're going to use the very tip of the brush and we're just going to pick out some of the areas where the mud is sort of um, sort of standing out so we're going to pick out some of the raised areas leaving the wash do its thing just in all of the recesses and this is going to just allow us to pick out and bring that muddy area sort of a little bit lighter and give it a little bit more depth and a little bit more to look at very very simple easy way to paint and again if you wanted to you could always boost this up a little bit further add a little bit of bone white and a creamy sort of white into the brown and just get a little bit of a, a lighter texture if you really want to boost that contrast you can um, but I'm not going to do that for this I'm going to make this nice and simple nice and straightforward um, and, and try to keep the focus as much as possible on dog meat himself rather than the base as well the cool thing with these fallout miniatures is they come on these scenic bases so you really don't have to do a lot to them other than just paint them the colors that you prefer um, so these are really really great models because they have these awesome awesome bases now from there I'm gonna make a really really quick and simple way of painting uh, these glass bottles so we've got the nuka cola bottle here and I've decided to try to paint this completely empty so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna use a almost kind of like a contrast kind of effect um, and that's all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint the bottle white first so I'm gonna paint this really 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 bright white by using rotten white and from there then we're going to use the flow improver and we're going to use a nice light blue i'm using herald blue here and that's all i'm doing is using one part of the blue to five parts of the flow improver and you can see now just how thin that has gone just by showing you on my thumb here this now has turned into a really light blue glaze and just by adding this across that white you can see that we're getting a little bit more color and a little bit more uh, sort of character out of this little white bottle so the bottle isn't white as such you just kind of get that little blue hint which creates the element of it looking like or possibly feeling like it could be like a, a glass color with a little bit of the uh, the, the color sort of uh, just popping through now the white underneath is also going to show through which almost kind of creates that little bit of a reflection and it's as simple as that to paint the bottle it will look great just as easy as that two simple steps and you have an empty glass bottle as great as that so from there I'm just going to pick out the uh, bloody red once more this time I'm only going to paint just around the edges of those uh, bottle caps as you can see but what I'm also going to do is using that Nuka Cola bottle I'm going to paint a nice big red circle just in the middle and if you're brave you can also try to add a small little bit of texture using white to kind of write Nuka Cola on there if you want um, I tried I'll be honest with you the models are very small and it was hard to try to get any kind of writing out of it. it just looked like small blobs but that's cool as well because it still adds to the texture and then for one of the final stages I'm gonna use scorpion green uh, my bottle is all in uh, different languages but I can assure you it is scorpion green on the Vallejo bottle and I'm just using again a very glazed thin down version of this and I'm gonna paint this into the cracks just to add a little bit of a sort of toxic kind of feel or a kind of radiation kind of effect so just using that scorpion green just to bring out a little bit of the sort of 
nuclear kind of waste effect on the base. And then for the final stage, that's all I'm going to do is I'm just going to use black and I'm going to run black quite nice and easily right around the base. And you can use any color that you want to go around the base. Uh, I've seen a lot of people use browns and things like that. That would also tie this miniature together quite nicely. Uh, but there is nothing more satisfying than painting around the base to know that you have completed your miniature and that you've got your model all done and ready for the tabletop as well. As you can see on my Nuka Cola bottle there, you can see some of the little details that I put in that I tried to add a little bit of the writing. And it does look really, really cool, even though I couldn't write the words because it was too small. Um, but yeah, again, you have to let me know if the Nuka, uh, Nuka Cola bottle was an easy thing to follow. If you thought that that was a cool little technique that we could uh, elaborate on and maybe do something with in future. Um, and all in all, there he is, that is dog meat, all done. And there he is fighting a super mutant with our lone survivor as well. And you can see how great those lighter textures have come through now on the fur as well. And the way that we've stippled some of that brown just across that dark, dark gray as well. It's a really cool little character. It almost seems too simple when you see it in the box, but when you actually put a little bit of time and you work out a few of these little techniques, you can really make this model stand out and make it look the part. So, as always, my friends, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your positivity. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of this video. And I hope to see you guys on the next one. Take care, my friends.